Hi, Ben Fraser, Sabretooth here. I'm going to talk you through quickly how I go about making transitions and drum fills when producing side trans in Logic. So I've got a nice simple 32 bar loop here with kick, bass, some percussion, and then a few transitions. So I'll talk you through the kind of things I normally do in my tracks. Okay, so first of all, the kick drum. So the kick drum's just coming through a sampler. It's a kick I made in uh, the Kick 2 plugin, and that is going to bus two. I've got my bass here, which is two channels and itself going through a group, and that is then also going through bus two. So essentially, bus two is a group with my kick and bass on. And on there, the only thing I've got which is active, is Logic's linear EQ, with a, you can see a low cut uh, and a high cut, but uh, neither of which is doing anything. And then what I've got here at the end of this 32 bar section is on this, um, on this group channel or bus, you can see I've got it set to region-based automation. In Logic, that means that the, the automation is attached to regions. A region just means one of these blocks on the arrange window. And in that region, I've simply got a bit of automation, which is essentially filtering out the bass frequencies in the kick and bass. Let's have a listen. Nice and simple. Uh, the reason I go with that region-based automation is that then this block is that automation and whenever when I'm arranging my track whenever I want one of those filtered kick bass sections I can just copy this block and it will do it I find it so much easier than messing around copying the actual automation when it's not attached to a region so that's nice and simple below this kick drum here I've got a second channel which is exactly the same as this previous kick channel except it's not going through the kick and bass bus it's going through another bus it's basically going through the output um, and what that means is that in sections like this, I can have a kick drum on its own, which is not filtered in the same way that the kick and bass has, which is going through the, the group here, and get this kind of effect very easily. So it's really simple, but it means I'm not having to mess around suddenly unsetting that filter to let a kick drum through. Uh, and that is a really nice effect. It's really easy, it's really quick. Uh, and actually with that, you can also start doing some more interesting stuff. For example, if I cop move these over, which uh, uh, is one I made earlier, as they say. play that again see I'm, I'm putting a volume down on the bass there I've got a kick drum fill here and then I'm kind of accentuating that kick drum fill with the kicks that are not being filtered uh, it's really quite a cool effect and really handy okay now so that's that. You'll see here, I've got yet another channel of kicks. It's called Kick Fill Small. So this one's actually audio. And what I've done is, uh, I'm just gonna have to stretch this one out here. Okay, is I've got a piece of audio here, which is that. So what I've done is made the kick drum really, really short. So it's, um, it's half a 30 second of a beat long and I've glued them together and made a long section with it. And that is in audio. You'll see why in a second. That's on an audio channel. It's not going through the, the group that the kick and bass is going through. And that's got an EQ on it, which essentially is cutting some bass frequencies, not completely. Um, so it's a low shelf, but I'm cutting about three and a half decibels of bass on it. And I've also got the volume a little bit lower. Now what that means is I can make kick drum fills like this. Ah, I just need to reset this filter, one sec.
and I, I love that effect. So what that is there, just to go to it in more detail, is that the kick, the main kick drums are in MIDI. So that's the fill I've created there. If I put the bass in the same view, you can see that the bass, the kick's here, the bass is there. So wherever there's a kick drum, I have actually muted the bass notes. That's absolutely crucial when you're making side trance kick drum fills. If you have the bass and the kick at the same time, they kind of get in the way of each other. But where I want those really fast, kind of quite unnatural kick drum fills, which are, as I mentioned, 30 second beats, I rely on the little audio loop. And the reason I do that is one, it's a lot easier using that loop than it is sequencing loads of little kick drums. They, they, it gets quite messy. And also, they are on a separate channel, and just by being a little bit quieter and with a bit less bass, the balance is a lot better. If those were sequenced in the MIDI up here, they would be far too overpowering compared to all the other kick drums because they're so short. And you can make so many cool drum fills um, with that. And I find that's the best way just to get that kind of balance. The great thing as well about that little bit of audio is if I zoom in over here, I can also stretch that out. You can see it's, it's I think it's eight, uh, eight bars long. I can also do this, which is actually, I'm gonna put it over here and I'm just gonna make it one bar long. So at the end of a transition, you can just put one bar of that with a little fade in, and that's the audio fade in, which is a lot easier than actually having to go and you know draw in a fade in, which I sometimes find is less precise. Uh, and also you can really quickly just play about with the curve of it. You can see it there. Remove the automation so you can see it more clearly. So you can play about with the kind of curve that you want if you want it really really sharp, you can do that. So those are my three channels of kick drum and my bass. And all those groups are set up in my Logic template, so I don't have to mess about uh, creating those. I just need to obviously put the right kick in when I'm kind of consolidating my loop. One other thing I like to do, which we've got here, is I like to export the kick and bass as a one bar loop and put it on a channel here. I've called it a uh, kick bass filt and on there I've got a flanger. I've got a uh, Logix EQ with a low pass filter with a bit of resonance on it, loads of overdrive and then another EQ just to cut out any unwanted bass frequencies. And let me just remove that automation first of all. Let's move this up a bit. And you can see this last one, I've got it reversed. And I can put some automation on that. And this channel is actually a part of my logic template. So when I'm making a track, I'll just make sure I export that one bar of the kick bass or, or more if there's uh, more kind of changes in it. But it's a really useful little tool when you've got a, a transition. And you can use it on its own uh, earlier on in a track, really effective way. You can use it in breakdowns as well with automation, a really effective way to quickly get really nice transitions. So all those together. Okay, down here I now have a group. I, I'm not gonna go into the percussion, that's just there for, um, uh, for effect. I'm gonna look at this transition group now. So this is a group full of transitions. First of all, I've got a crash symbol. That crash has got loads of bass cut out of it. It's got a little bit of stereo delay and a very long reverb. And the, these are go-to buses that are set up, effect buses that are set up, again, part of my template. So that's that. I also like to have a second crash. And this one, it's actually the same crash, but it's pitched up one semitone and it is panned hard right. And what you can see that I can do quickly with that is get this kind of effect. This is going back to the earlier um, kick drum fill, which is halfway through the 30 bar sequence. It's two bar sequence.
And to me, it's starting to emulate what a rock drum might do where you've got two crashes, one on the left and one on the right. Below that, I've got a track called Inverb. This is a clap with a really long reverb, which, be, which has been bounced in place. And then I've got a forward one, and then I've got the same one, but just reversed. And I like that is part of my Logic template. Really, it's just white noise, but it helps to give structure and shape to my arrangement. Down here, I've got Big Rev. Big Rev is another, essentially it's white noise. Um, big bit of white noise, which has got a fade in on it. After that, I've got on this channel here, actually before it, small rev. Um, so that big rev is part of my template. It's just white noise. Again, it's about giving a track structure and really quickly being able to arrange things because you get that kind of flow and energy really quickly. Small rev is something I put on a track by track basis. I try and make it a little bit tonal so it fits the, the key of the track. Um, in this case, let's see what that's doing. Really useful just to have that little one bar piece of uh, reversing, really useful in all kinds of transitions. And crucially, it's one bar long with a fade in. It's actually from a sample pack, I can't remember which one. Um, I generally back up that that big rev, which we heard before, which is white noise, with something more tonal, something that actually fits the, the tone and key of the track. I might create that in a synth with a pitch bend and some effects and bounce it off. I might use a sample pack, it depends on my mood. Uh, that's there. I've also got this another little bit of white noise and that again is part of my template and I tend to use that every eight bars. It's very subtle but it's just... Almost no bass in it at all. But between all those things you get this kind of default 32 bar white noise structure that, as I say makes arrangement really quick. On top of that, I generally have a separate, separate, group, separate group called effects, and that's why I'll have the more track-specific tonal effects. But actually having that little bit of white noise in the background is helping give things complexity and structure. So if I had a zap at the same time as that, or some other kind of um, effect with a delay on, that white noise is giving it shape and structure. Another thing I love doing for transitions is having some kind of glitchy sound. Uh, sometimes I'll take a vocal or another sound from my track and I'll chop it up in audio and bounce it off. But in this case, I have actually got something from a Sonic Spore sample pack, which is brilliant, full of little glitchy loops, which you can copy and paste together. Uh, really brilliant. I love having one of those available for transitions. Let's move this loop on a little bit. Let's do that. And you can see I'm starting to get all these bits which I can easily move around to get different fills. So if I move this uh, kick bass fill the loop. I could put this little 30 second beat kick drum loop there. And so on. There's just so many options. Finally, something I absolutely love doing in all my trans in, in transitions and fills is to have a big rock style uh, drum fill. Now I'm a drummer myself, so I always have an idea of what that fill might actually be. You know, I think about what I'd play as a drummer. The hard bit is getting the sound right. For example, Logic's inbuilt drummer plugin I find just does not sound nearly fat enough. Um, so what I do is I use a variety of third-party rock drum specific plugins, things like Get Good, Good, Get Good Drums, Stephen Slate um, drums, things like that. They have they are based on live drum samples. They have live reverb, kind of room reverb, 
and those with a few effects can be absolutely brilliant. And what I've actually done is create a sample pack called Xfills, which is available now to purchase for 19 euros. That includes 33 of these styles of rock drum fills at 138, 142, and 145 BPM. Uh, different drums, different drum fills, uh, all processed, ready to use and drop into your track. And that sample pack also includes the MIDI, so you can go and actually use them on your own drum sounds. Here I'm gonna use Anything Rolls. And I'll just unmute it so we can hear it in the track. I'll remove that little kick drum fill and put that filter back there. Maybe a little bit louder. Um, really cool. A little, one thing I like to do. See how this is actually in my trans. This is in my transitions group. And now my transitions group has quite uh, a lot of bass frequencies cut out of it. And I don't want to cut the ba that much bass frequency on my my X fills. So by dropping that audio channel in here, by default, it comes through that bus or that group. But what you can then do is manually change that back to the stereo output or actually what it should be going through is the master. Um, that is my master chain. That's just for like quickly mastering tracks on the go. But anyway, so that little tip means that you can have a track within your group for kind of visual neatness in your arrangement, but actually not going through the group. Uh, so you can kind of override that. Final thing I've got here is a little sub kind of sign, subby, pitch bendy thing. Really quiet, but those are really effective for giving a transition a bit of uh, a bit of depth. Final thing is this here. Now this is a bus and all my effect buses go through this bus. And this, this again is part of my logic template. So all the like the, the reverb and the stereo delay that's on that crash, for example, is all going through here. And the reason I have that in my range view is that I can do this, which is quickly mute the volume by automating it when I have a one bar transition like that. So if I just listen to this on its own, it's quite noisy and if I didn't do that so actually if we turn that off and if I just mute everything in there you can hear all the little reverb tails there which can, can sound good but it sounds very natural and in Psytrance you want things that sound psychedelic and unnatural so by having that automation available, I can really create, really quickly create absolute silence in a in a transition. So, for example, if there I put that sub, a kick, and that little kick flourish. And there we are. Um, we can just listen to the effect of all that together. <laughs> <laughs> 